Welcome back to the Mum Boss Method podcast. Hi, James. Hey, how are we doing? Yeah, good. Thank you, everyone. This is James. And James was my C-dip buddy, buddy at the weekend. <laughs> oh, those C-dips were amazing. The water was actually spot on. Wasn't I was it? so surprised. And I, I stand by this. Everyone's been saying to me how brave it was to get in the water. And it actually didn't feel brave at the time. It felt oh. amazing. Especially on the Saturday. Yeah, the Saturday was perfect. The Sunday was a bit harder. Yeah, yeah. Sunday was I think, definitely a bit I think we were in for like 15 or 20 minutes on Saturday. Oh, yeah. Saturday, I didn't want to get out. No. Until no. it got too busy. And then I wanted to get out. <laughs> I'm definitely i'm definitely too much sometimes to uh, like these big events sometimes i'm too much of an introvert and as soon as i see big crowds of people i kind of go oh yeah. no maybe maybe not yeah yeah which is ironic so, considering I'm at, my, I'm at home performing yeah i know put me in front of a big group of people and i'm at my happiest yeah it's funny, isn't it? How different we are in different situations. Um, we've just like dived straight in without any introduction, but I it just clicked into my head. Oh, yeah, we did sea dipping at the weekend. So if anyone doesn't know what we're talking about, we were both at IFS. It was the first time we'd met face to face. We've been on lots of um, Zoom calls together before in our mentoring group. But this is James. James, introduce yourself. Tell everyone who you are. Oh, I love that. I love that moment where you almost feel everyone's metaphorical eyes turn and look at you and go, so who's this bastard then? Oh, God, I'm sorry. Are we swearing? Are we not swearing? Yeah, we can swear. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, we swear. Good. <laughs> Panic. One of those questions you always forget to ask before you jump on a podcast. So I've been in the fitness industry for eight years now, coming up to nine and I've been a personal trainer. I've worked managing gyms. I've helped mentor PTs in their, within their business. And before that, my own journey in fitness was very much one of trying to get confident enough to be able to step in, into the big bad world of fitness, I guess. I think it always struck me as this place where there were so many stoic individuals who would, if you ask them a question, they turn around and growl rather than the reality of the situation it's usually the person with the biggest muscles in the gym has the biggest smile on their face if you tap mm. them on the shoulder unless you do it mid-set in which case you know, run um <laughs> <laughs> but I, rem I will always remember my first and i think this this story very much epitomizes who i am i will always remember the very first time i went into a free weights area because i didn't have a clue what i was doing i piled way too much weight on either side of the bar uh, got trapped under the bar uh, didn't realize that actually I, uh, as a 15 year old lad, I probably didn't need to be as strong as I thought I needed to be uh, and just squeaked Help. at someone who happened to be walking past uh, who proceeded to then lift the bar off me with one hand. And it scared me from being in the gym, the free weights area for a good few years. I think I don't think I got back into it until I was about 17. So mm. plenty of years of being downright terrified of fitness but also plenty of years of feeling like it was something that I had to do and something that I had to get over and I imagine mm. that's where some of the people who are listening to today's podcast are yeah for sure and we we have questions that we are going to talk about so thank you everyone that submitted questions but James um, and I had some really great chats at the weekend, which I think it was such good timing for just before recording this podcast, actually, because we've got to know each other a bit better and have that similar background of feeling quite intimidated by by fitness, even though you you obviously played rugby, didn't you, when you were yeah, younger? Absolutely. That actually I, I fell into rugby by mistake. I never really wanted to get into rugby. I, I'm not particularly sporty. Uh, a friend of mine, I was hanging out with him over summer. We'd only just become friends. It was very, it was an interesting story, as it were. He was really popular and really like top of the school, whereas I really wasn't and wasn't particularly popular. And we just happened to fall in together over the summer. Uh, and he said to me, why don't you come to rugby training? And I kind of laughed at him and said, don't think rugby's for me and he 
eventually twist my arm and talk me into it and i went along and actually i found it was quite good fun just hurling yourself at another human being <laughs> it was a good laugh <laughs> apparently i'm quite good at it so that that kind of started that journey and, and that really defined who i was for a long time that wasn't until i was about 17 18 and a lot of mm. people think that people who were in the fitness industry have always been sporty i really wasn't even even at going into rugby i wasn't particularly sporty i just found it fun yeah i think yeah. that's something that that probably was something that advice that i would give to anyone Make about it fun yeah about activity find something that you find fun and try new things until you do because there there will be a form of activity that you find fun yeah yeah unfortunately sure. it might be skydiving and you know if you don't have the finances to support that that can be an expensive hobby but not as expensive as you might think no no once you've once you've got your own shoot and once you've got qualified and whatnot you can do like 10 pound play yeah. rides up and then jump out i find that bizarre I know, isn't it? Well, what we're just going to get in a plane and you only want ten pounds from me? How 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 come? <laughs> yeah, well, it's because they don't cover the return trip. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> a really good point. Um, <laughs> now you wear quite a few hats. Yes, in everything yeah. you do. So before we jump into the questions, let's make sure everyone knows what all the hats are that you wear. Oh, wow. Um, I'm a face-to-face -face personal trainer. I'm an online coach. I'm also a business mentor for AF Mentors, shameless plug there. Uh, we help coaches <laughs> who actually want to have an impact in the world. And that's where I met Chrissy because Chrissy is a great example of a coach who genuinely wants to help people and wants to do something good with her love of, of movement and help other people find their love of movement as well. And I think that very much was was me and where I wanted to be. I'm a very empathetic person. I I want to see where people are coming from and meet them where they're at from a compassionate place, which is something that I thought was missing from the industry. Mm. It's amazing being able to to meet so many coaches. And again, the International Fitness Summit of the weekend was a great example, a great opportunity to meet so many coaches with so much compassion who genuinely cared and share stories and and build this connection of community. I realized that I'm not talking about my hats anymore. I'm talking about how good AFM is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I think, I think that's probably where my hats come from is that compassion of being able to look at where people are and say, oh, well, this person might be struggling with this. So let's have a little look at the, like pulling that out of them, mm. bigging them up, listening where needed. And it's not just about prescriptive exercise or prescriptive nutrition plans. It's about actually helping someone with their own thought patterning. Mm -hmm. Because how often does it come down to it's not you need a better workout plan or you need a you know you need a meal plan for sake. Um you need it's... more chicken and broccoli in your meal plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, that, that is it basically uh more chicken and broccoli and you'll be fine you heard it here first um it is meeting people where they're at and, and asking mm. them what what are you thinking what are you feeling tell me what your thoughts are about this and and moving from there and so whilst it might seem like i wear a lot of hats i think a lot of the time most of what i do comes down to saying tell me what you're feeling yeah tell me what's going on with you and then i mean we had conversations of that nature over the weekend where we just Tell me what you're thinking. Tell me what you're feeling. Yeah. And then reacting to the answer and yeah. hopefully helping along the way. Yeah. Like we can dream. Yeah. No, we are helping along the way. We know we are. <laughs> Chrissy <laughs> diving into my insecurities there. <laughs> Sars. Um, okay. Should we jump on some of these questions? Yeah, for sure. Let's do it. Okay. So first one. What are some of the biggest mistakes you've made in your health and fitness journey? Cottage cheese. <laughs> Cottage cheese, 110% of the way, is, is one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made full stop, let alone in my health and fitness journey. You don't like cottage cheese. Oh, I detest cottage cheese, but moreover, the reason that I was having the cottage cheese was the, the biggest mistake. Okay. So I'd read, I'd read about fast and slow digesting proteins. 
Yeah. And this is where I was really starting to like dig into the 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 intricacies of fitness. And I had it in my head that I needed to have 30 grams of a slow digesting protein before bed. And so so ensued, I'd say a good three months of four spooning cottage cheese into my mouth before bed, oh, like no. a, an entire pot. No, nothing to, to go with it, just just like hands shaking, sobbing into my cottage cheese oh, before no. bed, sitting in the kitchen of my shared house with my housemates thinking I was some kind of lunatic. Um, Fair point. That, that's probably, yeah, it's probably one of the, the biggest ones I ever made. Yeah. Um, I've made, I've made many, 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 yeah. like training twice a day. That was another, another huge one. Oh, have you ever done that? Have you ever trained twice a day? I've, I've doubled up on, I did this recently. I have an excuse. My friend, my gym buddy, my best friend was about to have a baby and our gym sessions we we gym together four days a week and I knew she was having the baby and then I wasn't going to see obviously I see her but not going to see her in the gym yeah. in the morning um I also really enjoy a spinning class and Friday that week was the only day she could go to the gym so I did the spinning class and then and then lifted with her oh man that hurt but I think that's a it's that's exercise from a perspective of of fun and socializing and i often see that kind of thing as you know when people talk about going to um going to to do rock climbing Mm. or going to do a um an obstacle course run Mm -hmm. that's where i see that level of of exercise coming from when people go oh you know i spent the entire day in the peak district hiking all day Doing two, a spin class and then, and then lifting is no different from that if you're doing it from a perspective of fun. I yeah. think the problem comes from when you're doing it from um, a perspective of, I have to do this to make progress. Mm. Yeah. And I have seen that before and I have done that in the past. Yeah. How long were you training twice a day for? So I used to wake up at four and drive an hour to the gym where I was at the time. And then I would spend about an hour and a half in the gym in the morning. And then I'd go and do a full day of work. And then I'd drive back to the gym. And mm-hmm. then I'd spend about an hour. And I didn't look how you thought I would look for that. I think when when you hear about that level of training, you think some kind of sculpted Adonis that, you know, you could you could grate cheese on their abs or something like that. And it, it really wasn't like that. I was a fairly muscled 20-year-old at the time. Mm-hmm. But it it really wasn't it didn't give you the results that you think it will more is not mm. always better no. and actually i was missing out on socializing i was missing out on resting i was driving four hours a day to and from the gym because i lived mm. so far away from it at the at the time i was also deeply unhappy in my job at the time mm. and i was also living an hour away from everyone that i socialized with so i was deeply unhappy in my life i think i was definitely using exercise as a way to to fill those gaps yeah. and to escape from it all yeah yeah and that and that tells you that that wasn't a good thing to do absolutely no I can't imagine doing yeah. that but I say my example is a bit of a joke I did it once and I said to Lucy well I won't be doing that again <laughs> <laughs> go on then um my shall I shall I share my yeah do. Mistake? do my biggest mistake is it a mistake or is it a regret? I guess I regret not lifting weights earlier in my life. I think that's it. That's it. I would love to know the the thought process behind why you didn't lift weights. Because I thought the way to be the shape I wanted to be was to run. So I before I did, that. yeah, before I did anything, I ran. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I, I was never good at running. I was, I enjoyed running back to the point. I enjoyed running. I could, yeah. I could 
I was not fast, but I could run for a long time around the London Marathon without stopping and had consistent Damn. miles. Every single mile was pretty much bang on the same time as the one previously. But it wasn't a quick one. But before that, I used to, yeah, just used to run all the time and thinking that that was the way that I needed to lose weight. And obviously now I know it wasn't, but... I feel like I would, if I'd lifted earlier, I was 33 the first time I ever picked up a weight, so 10 years ago. I think my whole my confidence would have changed. My resilience would have been different. I think my whole life would have been different if I'd lifted weights earlier because that's what it gave me when I started doing it. I think we could all benefit from doing the things that we're uncomfortable with a little more. Mm. I know that I speak as someone who does a lot of their a lot of their training around lifting weights and less of my my training around cardio and I could probably benefit from doing more cardio. Mm. In fact, it's something that I'm I'm looking to do at the back end of this year is get a bit more cardio and I haven't really done that much since I broke my leg. Um but that's not to say that I can't like I'm perfectly no. capable of doing it. It's just been I've just been put off it. Mm. And I think yeah. sometimes we get into this we get into a bit of confirmation bias and you see this with sports as well. I've heard mm -hmm. people say that snooker is the best form of exercise for you. I've okay. heard people that, that do that play squash say that they don't need to do any, any kind of resistance training because squash gives them all of the explosive power they need. And to a degree, they have a bit of a point but i don't think they have as much components of, of resistance training saying that resistance training is the only form of exercise you'll ever need to do ever again i think mm. getting your heart rate up is so beneficial so so beneficial you can definitely do that resistance training sure yeah. but think about thinking about what you've avoided and what you are less comfortable with and aiming yourself at that for a little bit could benefit everyone yeah that's such a good point that's such a good point. I avoided yoga for a really long time because I said it would bore me and yep. it, I wouldn't enjoy it. And I really enjoyed it. And it and it helped with, you know, just calming me down. I think a lot of people avoid yoga because the the association is sitting and being with yourself. If someone said to me five years ago, I want you to sit and do nothing for five minutes. I would have been bored out of my mind by minute two, mm -hmm. but it's because I was trying desperately to avoid spending time with myself. Yeah. And yoga can really, because of the fact you're holding different positions and fo and you're fo focusing your attention in different areas. Yoga can be amazing for learning to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. It can be ph phenomenal for learning to, to be able to hold that, that space for spending time with yourself because how many of us don't want to spend time with ourselves and actually yeah. we're all pretty fucking awesome and we could do with spending time with ourselves absolutely absolutely yeah, yeah. love that love that um okay second question i resonated with this one so much i've just joined a gym but every time i go I walk or I run on the treadmill. I can't seem to venture into the weight section because it's so intimidating. Help. I think at least 60, 70% of the people who will ever listen to this podcast just prick their ears up mm -hmm. listening to the answer for this. Now, I am not going to tell you that what I'm about to say is going to change your life. I hope it will have <laughs> some form of impact. What I want you to think about is two things. Number one, what do you deem enough time spent in the free weights area? Because a lot of people assume that if they go into the free weights area, that's it. They have to spend their entire workout in there mm -hmm. and they have to do this huge resistance training session. Whereas what I like to challenge people to do is if there are, if there is no resistance kit, like dumbbells, kettlebells, anything like that outside of the free weights area, I want you to pick one machine that you feel you would be comfortable using, mm -hmm. whether you've seen someone else using it or whether you've looked at it and thought, maybe that's not too hard to figure out. Go over, do one set and walk out again. Yeah. 
and then you can go you can go back to your treadmill right yeah you can go back to your treadmill but in much the, the same way that we would look at gently exposing something someone to something they're scared of the worst thing you could possibly do is try and force yourself into it and think oh, i'm going to yeah. do a whole workout in the, in the free weights area today and you'll get there and go i don't know if i could do one yeah what you might find is that actually when you're down there it might not seem that bad but i don't want you to put pressure on yourself to feel that no. if you don't feel it you don't feel it if it feels panicky let, let it feel panicky sit there do what you can get out yeah the other thing you could do and i, I alluded to this earlier is if there are dumbbells or kettlebells which usually the, there's a, a lighter amount of kettlebells or dumbbells knocking about somewhere that isn't yeah. the free weights area there's almost always a secondary set could we do something with those and again nothing huge not a full workout just one exercise one or two mm. exercises our minds very much work on evidence right so if we if we see something or, and we think we can't do it if we don't have any evidence to challenge that we're right we can't do it we've got no evidence we've got no not got no support if we try and say i'm going to do all of that when we've got no evidence to say that we can do any of it then you're basically pushing against a wall and a, and a very big immovable wall. Whereas if you've done one thing for one set, you've given yourself some evidence that actually you can do this. Yeah. Even better, find this point in the podcast. Remember, look at the timestamp of this point of the podcast. Take this podcast into the gym with you whilst you're standing on the treadmill and listen to this next bit. You are more capable than you ever new possible you are brave enough to be standing on that treadmill and even contemplating putting yourself out of your comfort zone which is an unbelievable thing to do and how many people can actually say they've ever really pushed themselves out of their comfort zone even if you only take two steps into that free weights area and change your mind not a single person in there will have even noticed you walking in if you can make it to one safe point in that free weights area and then come back out not a single person will notice. Not a single person will even look up from what they're doing. You are an absolute boss for even being able to contemplate it. So go and give it a shot and let us know how you got on as well. Yeah. Because I think we'd all like to hear about it. For sure. I don't feel I like that's... I can top that. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I, the thing is there, is, there is this perception in our minds when we think about something that we know we theoretically could do. And we want to do it, but we're not doing it. A lot of the time we we assume that it's down to discipline. We sit there yeah. and say, oh, well, maybe I'm just not disciplined enough. Maybe I just need to get over it. And for sure, to an extent, there is an element of just trying it and you know, trying to not be afraid to get it wrong. But that doesn't take away the fear. Yeah. The the when you were speaking, one of my favorite quotes. If you think you can, or you think you can't, you're right, Henry Ford. Right. Yeah, phenomenal quote. Yeah, because, and I've, I've been writing about this this morning, around this piece of building up the evidence in yourself that you can do those things. And and it it links into motivation, which I believe is a myth anyway <laughs> didn't we talk about this at the weekend yeah probably the, the idea that mo neither motivation nor discipline actually exist yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly and so you know there are days and times when both me and James I'm sure do not feel like doing it more often than not yeah <laughs> and my my rule is just just go in and do 10 minutes and those 10 minutes might be on the treadmill because that's my comfort zone because that's where I started. And and I'm I'm quite the opposite. Like I will, for me, my comfort zone is sitting on a on a leg extension mm. or sitting on a lap pull down or sitting on a bench. Like that's where I feel the most comfortable because it's this the space I've spent the most time. But mm. on the days where I'm not feeling it, I will say go in and do three sets of leg extensions yeah. and then leave. Yeah. And most of the time you don't leave. Most of the time it ends up being the best workout I've ever done. But, <laughs> and it is 
that lowering of expectations on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That really, that frees you up to be able to get into the free weights area. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that, go on. No, 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 please go on. You, you, you look like you were really up onto that. Well, I just think this expectation that we have of ourselves, we put these expectations up so high. And then what happens we don't give ourselves enough credit for what we've already done. And then we beat the hell out of ourselves because we didn't meet the ridiculously high expectation. The fact you are at the front door of the gym is amazing because you're already, I don't know any statistics on this, but you are a way ahead than most more, most other people. Well, if we look at, you know, if I'm just going to have a little look at uh, adults who, adults who engage in physical activity, in the UK. Uh, let's see what we get. Uh, okay. Wow. Okay, so 63% of people will engage in moderate intensity, intense exercise that meets the chief medical officer's guidelines of 150 minutes per or, or more, uh, which is an increase of 1.7% year on year, which is awesome. Yeah. But there are then still 36.9% of people who aren't meeting that that minimum. And that minimum is very low. Yeah. That's a very low amount of physical activity. So yeah, just by making it to the door of the gym, you've probably already topped topped the the minimum levels of activity you need to get to improve your health, which is grand. But we can go on better. Yeah. For sure. And that's the other thing I'd say about this. We often, and I think, was it Stephen Bartlett at the weekend? Said, oh, it was Paul Moore, actually. Said, we can probably do a little bit more. Yeah. We could probably go a little bit further. We could do a little bit more than we're currently doing. Yeah. We might not necessarily want to admit that. But there's always that that bit that we can do you know what I could I could probably do a little bit more yeah yeah I love that and I and I think on a really practical level well my phone just fell over I'm gonna just turn that (laughs) off (laughs) um on a really practical level so James has really talked about actually what James said is is really motivational but on a practical level if you don't know what you're doing in the gym ask someone for help because believe me all of the fitness instructors that are walking around that gym cleaning the machines and standing chatting would probably love to spend 10 15 minutes talking to someone who actually wants their help rather than cleaning the machines yeah trust me they don't want to be standing there no they, the reason they're talking to their colleagues, and I mean, this is a whole other podcast. I feel like this is an AFM podcast rather than a, yeah. <laughs> a, a fitness podcast. Um, but if they're standing around talking to to their colleagues, it's because they want to be doing something related to their, yeah. their job. Yeah. And because their colleagues will give them the conversation around fitness and around exercise yeah. and around movement, they would much prefer someone to come up and say, look, I don't really know what I'm doing. Could, could someone just give me spend five minutes and just show me something? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Love that. Yes. There might even right. be an induction or a free PT session that you might be able yeah. to make, might be able to take advantage of. Maybe your gym does something you don't know about it yet. Yeah, exactly. So Just ask, ask the question. The yeah, worst they can say sure. is no. Yeah. And then you're no Maybe worse I'll... off. Yeah. You're no worse off. No one's gonna no one's gonna be like, oh, look at that person who asked for help. <laughs> no. I don't no. think I've ever heard someone say, Oh, look at that person. Oh. How silly it was that they asked for help. Most people are like, oh, fair play. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, Right, next one. I've had such bad experiences with weight loss in the past. I don't know where to start anymore, even if I should bother trying. Mm, My heart. Mm -hmm. Right. I think there's a couple of things to consider in this one. And obviously your individual experience and your individual circumstance is going to play a huge role into whether it's even appropriate for you to start trying to lose weight again. Because 
if you've had such bad experiences with it in the past, then you're going to have a really negative connotation to it. And you're going to, you could end up digging yourself into a hole. That isn't the same thing as saying you shouldn't start exercising. Mm. Now, one of the, one of the considerations to make here is resistance training as an example will help you live longer yeah and that is independent of weight so i was reading some really interesting uh, numbers i'm gonna find his name because i've just i sent him a message this morning because i was so uh dr richie kirwan he is a phd nutritionist and i listened to a lecture that he spoke about last year about health just general health and something mm. called all-cause mortality, which means your chance of dying. Having a high BMI or a BMI that puts you in the overweight category or at-risk category increased your risk of all-cause mortality by around 30%. Now, if you look at that in terms of statistics, 30% isn't much of an increase. Mm. Not really. The comparison is if you don't do exercise, you're chance of all cause mortality increased by over a hundred percent yeah double the risk of dying yeah. at any given moment that's terrifying yeah it is Sm even it smoking is. and alcohol don't come that high no they come yeah. interestingly they come higher than being overweight which i find a fascinating statistic because everyone talks about weight loss for health whereas actually stopping drinking and stopping smoking and exercising will do way more for your overall health than losing weight would and yeah. so examining the reason that you're trying to lose weight is a good place to start because if you're if you're trying to lose weight because you feel like you have to for your health then there are many many other things that you could do that would benefit your health and in the process of doing some of them you might find that you lose a little bit of weight at the same time yeah if you're trying to lose weight from an aesthetics perspective i'm sure chrissy would agree with this oh sorry it is something that you you can do but you also have to be really aware of why you're doing it and, and whether you're doing it for yourself or not yeah because if you're not doing it for yourself if you're doing it because you want to look better for your partner or because you think that your fit clothes better and that will make your life better it won't and I, i'm i'm so sorry to hear that i'm just so sorry to say this because i know that so many people hold on to the idea that if they lose enough weight they will be happy and that that isn't how life works unfortunately and i can say this as someone who has been lean enough to step on a bodybuilding stage in the past uh, and i i have had abs that you could break cheese on <laughs> in the and, and it didn't make me happier in fact no. when i got to that, that level of lean i was actually deeply unhappy yeah because my entire livelihood was was revolving around food and everything was thoughts of food and everything was thoughts of, of my body and making sure that I looked a certain way and worrying if I felt bloated. There are so many more worthwhile experiences in life mm. to be had. And a lot of them can be found by building your confidence through exercise and through movement. And so to answer the question, I don't know where I should start or even if I should start. Yeah, you should, but it doesn't have to be from weight loss. It doesn't no. have to be for weight loss. You can start for so many other reasons. I, and I really, whoever it was that submitted this question, please know that I really just want to give you a hug because I know that what you're experiencing is not individual to you. Mm. It's really not. There's a whole no. collective of people that feel like they would be happier if they lost weight. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I totally agree. And I guess I want to add to that. There's nothing wrong with, have, with having a fat loss and aesthetic goal nothing Not but all. one no. of the things that that coaches like James and I will always do is is as he said get you to understand your why get you you know if someone says to me they want to lose weight for a wedding or a holiday I'm like mm, let's have a chat about that because yeah. it's you know there is there is a bigger reason for doing it and, and for being healthier and and so I couldn't agree with what James is doing is saying sorry more and yes you should 
you should start, but you could start by going for a 10 minute walk. I I know that this, this probably sounds quite alien to be fair. And I know that the first time I've, I've had this conversation with clients before where they've said, oh, I really want to, I, I need to lose weight. And I've said, I agree that it would improve your, your life if you were more active, but I don't think you have to lose weight. And they look at me like I've got, I've grown another head in the, the space of the conversation that we've been having. Mm. Um, because actually no one has to lose weight. No one has to, but you can want to, yeah. and it's okay to, it's absolutely okay to want to. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. the only, the only person who ever fails at anything is the person who doesn't try again. Yeah. And so if you're worried about weight loss, if particularly if you've had bad experiences, I think that's the thing that probably sets my alarm bells off the, the fact that you say you've had bad experiences with weight loss. And that might be something like a certain slimming club, uh, shaming certain levels of weight loss. And this is where having a coach like Chrissy or myself who actually understands the, what weight loss looks like in the reality of terms rather than just on a week on week basis would make a huge difference to you. But that's where I say you don't have to, mm. yeah. but you should be doing something. We should all be, we should all be doing something. And I know this is, you know, I'm, I'm, I get very fixated on weight loss sometimes. Yeah. I, I know that I get very fixated on weight loss and, I have, I'm very much projecting my own insecurities there to be like, oh, wait, hold on. Let's, let's yeah. just have a little moment by the fire yeah. and ask ourselves why we're doing this and if we need yeah. to. Absolutely. Yeah. Why the best, one of the best questions you can ever ask yourself. Yeah. Why am I doing yeah. this? Yeah. What's my motivation? And it's uncomfortable. If you've never used an emotions wheel before, now is a great time to use an emotions wheel. It's a little tool mm. where you start in the middle and then it gives you some vague emotions like happy, sad, angry. Um, uh, think happy, sad, angry, bored, I think is another one. And then you work outwards and it will give you some more emotions that are a little bit more niche, a little bit more fixed. And then you work out again and eventually you find that uh, that word actually really describes my emotion exceptionally yeah. well. And yeah. you can start to articulate where you're coming from. It's a great bit of self-reflection. Yeah. Can you tell that I'm into journaling? Love it. Love it. <laughs> um, yeah, emotions, Will. That's a great suggestion because from such a young age, we're taught not to feel our emotions. Yeah. Even more so, to, even more so not to express them. Yeah, for sure. And I feel, like, I feel like women get this a lot more than men. Do you? Yeah. I do. I feel like so, and this is quite interesting because I feel like men are are prohibited from expressing certain emotions. Mm. Sadness should not be in a man's repertoire, mm. right? Defeat, like anything short of, oh, I'm going to pick myself up and try again, is yeah. is not good enough. And I actually think that works to a lot of people's advantage in that it's a good thing to be able to pick yourself back up. Mm. But I also think women are are almost gagged from showing the rest of the spectrum. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a really good way of putting it. I've never thought of it like that. You know, I, I've known many women who don't feel like they can express anger. If they do, they're loud or bossy. Or aggressive. Or yeah. aggressive. And or not ladylike. That's the that's the one that really gets me. I'm like to fucking tell me what ladylike is and i swear to god <laughs> <laughs> but I, yeah. I think yeah, ev everyone could benefit from relearning to express their emotions yeah but i also think it's something that and again it's like i was chatting to someone about their menstrual cycle the other day and i said no, i feel like i'm mansplaining the menstrual cycle i i'm never going to be able to understand that entirely i'm never going to be able to fully articulate that or fully put empathize with that i'm only basing it off what i've seen and so listening to this, you might think oh, that doesn't relate to your experience in the slightest. And if it doesn't, then I can only apologize. But yeah, it is it is just what I've noticed. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. It's great to get it's great to get a man's insight into that, you know, to hear your version of how you see emotion. And we had that 
menstrual cycle conversation on Sunday when we were walking as well, didn't we? So, yeah. Yes. About the male perspective of the menstrual cycle. Yeah. 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 We shouldn't be cr- we should not be cringing away from periods. And on a side note, if anyone doesn't track their menstrual cycle, please start using the Flow app. Yeah. It's amazing and it will it will help you notice patterns that you did not notice yourself. Yeah. And even if you don't have a cycle, you can still use it to track other symptoms which can show you a pattern. Yes. Yes, very very fair point. Yes. Um James, I'm really conscious of the time. Have you got time for the last question? Yep, absolutely. Okay, last one. I never put myself first because I always want to keep everyone else else happy. How do I stop? People pleasers unite. <laughs> Love this one. Because full on me and Chrissy sitting in that camp waving the banner for people pleasers all over. I think it's it's so, so important that we do cover this one and give it the time and energy that it deserves because it does deserve a lot of time and it does deserve a lot of energy in spite of the fact that the person who asked this question probably didn't think it deserved time or energy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Learning to put yourself first can be really difficult because it might be from a, a lifetime of being taught something else a lifetime of being taught you only exist in this world to make other people happy. I think it has to start with understanding the benefit of putting yourself first. Mm -hmm. That's for me, that's where it had to come. And actually I had to approach it from quite an unhealthy mindset in that I had to approach it from, I cannot be my best for other people if I'm not putting myself first, which I appreciate is the exact opposite of what we're trying to get to here. We're trying to get to the point where we can put ourselves first, irrespective of what that means to other people. Mm. But that was how I could levy myself into that mindset. Mm. If I could say, right, I know that I will be my best version of myself for those around me. If I make more space for myself, it was a very easy step for me to go, oh, okay. In which case, I can start to to put myself first. What might that look like? It sure as hell didn't look like drawing shit tons of boundaries straight away. No. It started for me, it very much started to look like feeling my feelings. Ironically, we're back at the emotions bill because mm-hmm. I'd spent so long smothering them. I had spent so long denying what I wanted, what was important to me, the kind of things that would fulfill me and make me happy. Because I was I was so fixated on everyone else. I was so fixated mm. on putting my value on on how other people perceived me. Mm. I didn't know who I was. And that was uncomfortable and that was scary. This is one of those times where I think actually seeking out external help can have a huge difference and a huge impact. Mm-hmm. I remember once saying to a therapist that I was working with, I feel comfortable telling you my problems because I'm paying you to be here. I don't have to pretend you actually care about me. And then the the voice in the back of my head went, oh, but they probably pride themselves on caring, to which I then followed up saying, well, I'm not saying you don't care. I'm mm-hmm. just saying I- I'm paying you to be here. And so it, 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 it's easier for me to talk to you about how I'm feeling. Um, and, and that can be really useful, is, is seeing someone who's a specialist within that area can really help. But if you aren't in a position to be able to, whether it's financially or whether it's time-wise, if you aren't able to, to, to go down that route, journaling can be a fantastic starting point. Yeah. And do you have a, a journal that you recommend? Um, I actually free write. Oh, wow. Oh, it's high-level journaling there, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it stays on my desk. Um. But I started with just three three reflection questions at the end of every day. So that is some guided medita- guided journaling, isn't it, to start with? Mm, that you've done yeah. That. So I have two guided journals that I recommend to everyone. Yeah. Um, one of them is The Greatest Self-Help Book is the one written by you, mm. by Vex King. I um, love Vex is- King absolutely incredible book the questions move around um day by day so you don't get bored they don't get stale um the other one is 
the six minute diary which is another brilliant one now that is much more um aligned with having the same structure day on day so if you're the kind of person that likes routine and you like like answering the same questions day on day then answering the questions i'm grateful for giving three yeah. things things uh, this is how i will make today great and a positive affirmation and writing that out every day can massively mm. improve your mindset and how you see yourself and then at the end of the day asking yourself what was my good deed today how can i improve tomorrow and what are three great things that i experienced today writing yeah. out those things can just help center things around yourself a little bit more yeah especially yeah. if you've been so used to centering your life around someone else around a group of other people or around your work friends or around your your family if you start yeah. shifting that attention and start putting it in on yourself and this uh, to, this always feels very at odds to what i imagine a lot of other advice from fitness individuals might be yeah in that where people say well you've just got to make time for yourself and that's another one when people when people say about putting everyone else first i don't have time to make i don't have time to do things like that because people need my attention all the time my response to that to, to everyone that works with me is often the same is do you have time to take a shit <laughs> at some point in your day yeah. do you take a shit now, again, <laughs> there will be someone listening to this podcast who is a single parent, whose children are with them all the time. They don't have childcare support mm. who will turn around and say, no, I don't. Mm. And in those instances, you might have to try to learn to journal alongside managing your other responsibilities. It could be, well, there's an episode of Bluey on. I love Bluey. <laughs> Bluey's, Bluey's like a great like life lessons um, post. It was released apparently by the government in Australia. I didn't know that. Yeah, I heard that. Time. Um, and it makes sense if you watch an episode of Bluey, you're like, God damn, my heart. Yeah. <laughs> I was not expecting it. But again, there's your opportunity, there's your window. But for everyone else, if you've got time to take a dump, then you've got time to spend five minutes reflecting because no one is going to challenge you on going to the toilet. No, no. It's, right. It's a really good point. I have quite often suggested keeping a journal in the toilet. That's a so great that, shout. So that when you, if you don't have much time, you can go to the toilet, you can set a five minute time and you can do your journaling and then you can come out and mm. no one will ask you about that. I've never heard anyone go, even in the laddiest of laddish environments that I've been in, like the rugby playing crowds, no one is ever going, how long, how long were you in there for what just came out of your ass? Yeah. No one wants to have that conversation. No, no. No, I I really like that as a as a tip. And my the questions I used to ask myself were uh, similar to the six minute diary. But for me, just being able to spend those few minutes just thinking about what you need. It's about recognizing what you need. And that was it for me, was recognizing what I needed. And recognizing that if I didn't start giving myself some of what I needed, I couldn't give anyone else anything. Yeah, right. there's there's no hope. There's there's no hope if you don't recognize what you need. Yeah, yeah. No, that's great. Great tips, um, James. This has been awful, awful, just awful. <laughs> Charming. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I, been... I have felt the same thing. I've been waiting yeah. for this to end. To be quite honest with you. <laughs> No, it's been <laughs> awesome. But I, I've got a question to ask you. What's your favourite pizza topping? Not pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> um, I so I'm I'm half Italian, and this this question is something that everyone's always like, "Oh, what's what what's an Italian's favourite pizza topping?" Honestly, it's just cheese, just cheese, cheese and tomato for me. Good cheese, good cheese. Yeah, I quite like putting a bit of basil on my pizza. Nice okay, cheese, cool. tomato, and basil. I cannot go wrong. Favourite exercise? Favourite yeah. exercise? Probably a hip thrust because it makes me feel like an absolute boss. Okay. Okay. Right. Yes, I always ask people what their favourite food is, but I know on your Instagram profile it says pizza enthusiast, so I had to ask you about pizza. Yes. <laughs> I, just, I just love it, and I also think it's one of the things that a lot of people don't allow themselves. Love a pizza. Yeah, pizza's a banging. Yeah. Who doesn't? I, I've always thought that you can fit a pizza into any diet plan. Of course you can. Yeah. 
Bush cam, unless it's Slimming World. <gasps> um, I mean, to be fair, you can't have a mashed banana in Slimming World, so... No, there you go. There you go. Uh... Um, James, where can people find you? Uh, Instagram at Final Push Fitness. You can also find me at finalpushfitness.co.uk. But to be honest with you, I'm much better at replying on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, okay. Nice and straightforward. Just type Final Push Fitness into your Instagram search bar, and a bloke wearing a cap with a smile that is way too big for his face will pop up, and that is me. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. Are you sure it's not? Have you changed your mind? You said it was awful. It a few has minutes been ago, awesome. Right? No, it has been it, awesome. It, okay, I'm, I'm glad to know that in that last five minutes, it's the pizza topping, wasn't it? It's changed your mind. It was awesome. I just wanted to. <laughs> I just wanted to say awful. I just want, but just the, the word awful just sounded right. Yeah, I was like, it's been all. I'm going to say awful and see what he does. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. The the people pleaser in me wants to cringe away and say it probably was awful, but no, it wasn't the, awful. The the very logical side of me knows that I'm not actually bad at my job. I'm actually quite good at it. So you're I'm going to go ahead and back job. myself there. Yeah, you're amazing at your job. Everyone, you. go follow. Go thanks, dude. Go follow James. And um, if you love this podcast, give it a share. Give it a share. Yeah, do please. Yeah, throw it out there. <laughs> Right, say bye, James. Thank you very much for having me. Goodbye. Bye.